Threat at North Korea. Tensions certainly are high, but talks are happening now. As there's word today, a senior U.S. diplomat has been engaging and continues to engage in back channel talks with North Korea. It all comes as President Trump really triples down publicly on his rhetoric, warning North Korea the U.S. is locked and loaded. We started off with former U.N. spokesman Rick Grinnell, who joins us right now. On these talks, a senior U.S. diplomat, Rick, speaking uh, to somebody senior on the North Korean side, the back channel talks, the Associated Press tells us, continue to take place. It, surprising, encouraging, anything we should take away from that? Uh, it's not surprising. I think it's very encouraging. We've had six party talks uh, going on for a long time. We've been trying to talk to the North Koreans. To be honest, uh, I think the bigger diplomatic talks are with China yeah. right now because they hold all the keys. We are making some progress, I hear, although there still needs to be some more action. You know, one of the problems, Connell, is that we have the Chinese who are supposed to be implementing past sanctions and the new sanctions. They haven't always done a good job of implementing those sanctions, even though they raise their hand inside the Security Council and they go along with that. So we need to pressure China. We need to watch. We also have this program called the Proliferation Security Initiative, the mm -hmm. PSI, which is uh, in the region, Japan, South Korea, and the United States and others. We watch all of the ships. Um, and flights going in and out of North Korea, we can right. stop. We have authority through the Security Council to stop board those. That needs to be aggressive right now because we've got to shut down any trade that violates the U.N. sanctions. It's okay. really important. Uh, to follow up on those points in a couple of different ways, um, you know, with, with China, uh, you mentioned the word trade there. You're talking about violation of the U.N. Security Councils, but I wonder how important just using trade and kind of a carrot and stick approach, something the president has mentioned in the past, seemed to have gotten away from before this particular conflict. But can that still be effective with the Chinese? How do we put pressure on them? It's such a good question. I think it goes to the heart of really what the solution is. In the past, we've made moral arguments with countries like China and Russia. We've said, follow the sanctions or do this because it's the right thing to do. President Trump, however, has done something differently. He's, he's uh, showed us that he's willing to mix trade policy with foreign policy. He told the Chinese specifically early on this year that if you are willing to help us on North Korea, you'll get a better trade policy. Mm -hmm. Intermingling those policies is exactly what diplomats want to see because we bring all of the tools from the U.S. government into the, the debate and into the negotiation. So I am hopeful that we have commerce, agriculture, energy, all of the departments within the U.S. government who have power right. bilaterally with China are pressuring China. Now, I would think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think the Chinese need to believe that the president is serious about military action if they're going to move, no matter what we say about trade. Do you think they do? Do you think Xi Jinping thinks Donald Trump is serious about possibly acting, even preemptively acting with regard to North Korea? I do think so because, you know, what you hit on is the difference between a military threat and a credible military threat. It's very hard for diplomats to sit across the table and try to negotiate a settlement uh, without behind us having a credible threat of military action. What Donald Trump is giving diplomats right now is a very credible threat. We see what happened in Syria. We see what happened in Afghanistan. Make no mistake, uh, Japan and South Korea, our allies, know that when Donald Trump says that, he, that we will react right. and we will protect, they know that that's a good thing. The Chinese also know that. Now, on the I issue, though, of preemption, I think it's interesting that we've had expert after expert come in here this week. Not everybody, but I think a lot of people are coming in and saying that there's part of that that isn't so viable in their view because you would have to put up with so many civilian deaths in places like South Korea and potentially in Japan. But you're saying that the threat is still credible, even with that. Well, the threat is credible for diplomats like me who are trying to solve this without military action. Look, I think that all of our diplomats in the region and around the world need to be, their number one issue right now needs to be North Korea, pressuring right. countries in the Middle East and Africa to stop doing trade with North Korea. We have to implement these sanctions. So I want to see diplomats going right up to the very end and, and never stopping. And the president and the NSC decide when to transfer the file to the Pentagon. 
where Secretary Mattis and his team, they don't negotiate. Let me ask you one more thing. Um, you know, we're heading into a weekend which I assume will be tense. This week has been quite tense. We think there's some sort of a deadline, artificial or not, next Tuesday. The 15th has been mentioned as this possible attack on Guam or message sent to Guam. I think it's a better way of putting it by the North Koreans. What's your sense? What do you think is going to happen? I, who knows? I think that we still have room for diplomacy. And what, I, what I'd like to see us is, is watch very closely to see if the Chinese stop doing trade, if they shut it down, if we're getting action. If we are not getting action by this weekend, by the end of this weekend from China, right. serious action, then I think we should go back to the U.N., try for oil sanctions, and we should bilaterally, unilaterally implement banking sanctions. I know that's painful for the financial community and for uh, hmm. people who, sh who sh you know, shop and buy Chinese products. The price will go up. Banking but sanctions. But I think it's too serious to uh, not. Uh, banking sanctions. Uh, uh, Unilaterally. That, okay, from the U.S. against, and that would be, uh, how would that work? Well, look, uh, again, I, I, I don't want to be too flippant here. It's not without pain, but it's a serious enough situation where I think we say to China, either you have access to the U.S. banking system, either you're going to work with us, mm -hmm. or you're going to work with North Korea. We want to see you shut it down immediately. The Chinese really do have power, and we have power with the Chinese. We haven't implemented the serious oil sanctions at the U.N. The Chinese tossed them out of, of the U.N. resolution right. this last go-around. They didn't want to see the oil sanctions. I, I believe we should have stuck them in there. We should have negotiated harder to have oil sanctions there. Since we don't have them, let's give the Chinese uh, a little more time to see if they're really acting. If they are not acting mm -hmm. fast, in this situation, then I think that uh, we, should, we should implement banking sanctions, call another Security Council meeting, and try for oil sanctions. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, you're right. That would be serious, but these are serious times. Rick, thanks for starting us off. We always appreciate your expertise on this.